Bromley FC 1, Barnet 3. It was a game that had everything. We came back from 1-0. I'm joined by the gaffer, Dean Brennan. Dean, they don't really write scripts like that in football, do they? We kept believing. Uh, we showed tremendous bravery, which was important to keep getting on the ball on the national turf against a very physical side. They have a lot of pace in wide areas and they have two box players up front. So we wanted to wear them down and keep passing the ball. I thought we fully deserved that victory. We set out our stall early within the game. We moved the ball really slick, really well. Um, we had several chances, good chance of the goalie made some, some brilliant saves. And then at half time, you could see they tweaked things, sort of copped onto what we were doing in central midfield. And they had the dominance of sort of like 10, 15 minutes. But then uh, we made a couple of substitutions. I thought they made a huge impact in the game. And um, we kept believing, we didn't, just, even though we scored an equaliser late, we kept going. So it just shows you the character we have in the group. Um, and that's only built on on performances, and uh, and we've a lot of players missing as well tonight. It's a it's a really good performance and a fantastic victory. Yeah, congratulations, and I think you're right. It shows character from a side that we could have, our heads could have dropped quite easily. Let's look at that first half. What did you make of it? We looked on top for for a lot of it. What did you make of some of the chances we probably should have taken away? I thought their goalie had a fantastic game. If anything, I thought he was actually man of the match for them, their goalkeeper. So, um, yeah, we've got some great areas. Look, like I've always say, my job is to get the players into them areas if they take the opportunities. And once we stop creating chances, then we're in trouble. We've continually created chances running our 15 league games this season. Um, and we didn't manage to take them in the first half. We spoke about half time. We wanted to stay on the front foot. We knew they'd sort of change things. How do we handle that? Uh, we knew they have a long throw, they, have, they like to play off entries, so we have to stay, keep a high line so we don't give away throw-ins and corners. And uh, In the end, they, I thought they scored a really good goal, they got in behind us, walked the ball really well, and uh, it was a good ball squared across and the left wing-backs come in from right to left. But um, yeah, like I say, they're a good side and they've got a lot of ambition here as well, so they ain't shirking. Um, so, but from our point of view, we've got a good group of players that in every game have gone to the line this year and they continue to do that today. And I, talk, I was delighted for our supporters as well. You, you know, I was here last year and it was a really tough day here last year um, for the whole football club. Um, so, to turn things around and, and that, that's really for our supporters and uh, even for our owner who gets a lot of stick at times. I'm delighted for Tony as well because. You know, he gets a lot of stick, but he's an honest man, air owner. Um, and I hope he's enjoying that at home tonight. I know he wasn't here, I know his family were here, so I hope he's enjoyed that victory. That's for him too. So, as a football club, nights like this don't, haven't been around much lately, so uh, hopefully we can keep bringing them back. I noticed, especially in that first half, uh, Marvin Armstrong got forward quite a lot, maybe a little bit more than we've seen in previous games. Is that purposeful? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We wanted Marv to run on top of their two sitting midfield players, two technical players. So Marv's aggressive, he can run, he's quick. Um, he's still learning his trade. He's still very immature as a footballer. He's got a lot to learn, but he's willing to learn. Um, he's a great impact on the game today. He deserved his start today. Sort of walked out from with the injury we had. He probably wouldn't have got a start if he didn't have the injuries we had. Um, and then obviously, even with Dom Revan, we had to wrap him up in cotton wool. But just going back to Marv, yeah, he, he learns quick. Um, one attitude is a, there's a great old saying, it's an Irish one, reliability is better than ability. And uh, Marv's got bundles of bundles of reliability and he's, he's willing to learn. Um, so yeah, I'm delighted for him as well. Good performance again from him. Let's talk about the three goals. The first one, Idris. Yeah, superb. I saw you go flying on the touchline. What do you make of it? Yeah, I stacked it, yeah. <laughs> First time that's happened to be fair. Quite funny, it'll probably be on uh, you being framed, I think, that one. Um, what a goal. You know, we saw a lot of bravery. I think Keane did really well running the channel. We sort of come back out. Um, we spoke about going, switching the ball side to side, which will create space for us when we get down one side. And it just bent it into the corner. Um, yeah, great finish. It sort of hit the stanchion. From my angle, I was thinking, is it in? Is it the post? There's obviously a bottom stanchion that's hit that. And then we score up there. So great goal, and it has made a big impact. Um, it took a little bit of time. It's like anything, you know, he didn't have a full pre-season on international duty. So he's got going now and we've got him sort of in his strongest position and uh, he had a huge impact for us. The second one, free kick. I think there were a few frustrations that play wasn't waved on and it was brought back for the free kick. Pritch said he was originally going to take it, but you instructed Hawley to take it. What a header? Yeah, because Pritch is brilliant in the air. Um, he's a fantastic header the ball. And I, just... I think he was saying his fourth headed goal this season. Yeah, yeah, he's really he's technically brilliant. Um, he scored a lot of goals for Dev at Maidenhead before he got his move. Um, did he get the, the Blackpool and then he went to 
Then he went to Bradford, yeah. He can score goals, he's so versed. He played wing back, we put him in midfield when we made the change. He went in there, he made a big impact in midfield for us. So, yeah, we, I did say to him, get yourself in there, let Harley take it, because Harley's a master technician. I thought Harley made a big difference, just putting his foot on the ball, composure, going in the right areas. So, the changes were big and, yeah, great at that from Pritch. They, they're nicer when they hit the crossbar and bounce back up and go in. So, and then obviously, his second goal, it's a beautiful shot. I was thinking, don't, don't shoot, because we wanted to waste, waste the time, get it into the corner, but he shot and there. Uh, you know, full credit to him, it's a great finish. How many has he got now? Is that five? Five, six? Uh, like that. Yeah, he's doing yeah, he's good return. Look, a difficult place to come. They hadn't actually lost at home all season. Artificial turf. Is that something you can really say, wow, we came here and really put our stamp on tonight? Yeah, look, we had to be brave. And bravery for me is getting on the ball. Uh, we played for us, we played overload in a, in a lot of different areas. Um, and that really starves them of the ball. Ideally, I would have liked to have gone in with the lead, which I think we deserved at half-time. We knew we'd have to weather a storm. To be fair, in that storm, they only got one goal, which was, which was good for us, and we kept believing. And uh, That belief just comes from togetherness, and that's created by everyone being honest, working hard, sticking together through the tough times. And I did say to you that early on in the season that we will have times where we have to stick together. We've got to stick together, and, and that happens a lot in this business. We won four of the last five now. Uh, we went through some tough times and uh, yeah, so these are the good times. But it can easily change in this division, so we've got to keep our guard up at all times. We're sort of a tour away tr through the season now and we're in a solid position. Absolutely. Let's look ahead. The fixture list is relentless in this division. We've got Scunthorpe and then Southend uh, on Friday, Tuesday. How are we going to prepare with the f only a few days to, to yeah, prepare? The boys will have the day off tomorrow. We've got sort of offering them swimming pools and stuff like that. A um, friend of mine's got a gym and a swimming pool at his house, so we sort of say, if you want to go over there, you can. He's got loose back. A um, friend of mine from the boxing wall, so he's, he's prepared to do that. Um, so some of the boys are going to go do that. Some of them will go for a walk and do what they have to do. They've got a report in before 12 o'clock for the recovery, which they'll do with George. Uh, had a performance kind of thing and then um, Tuesday we've been again uh, prepared in a, a double session and then obviously we prepare for Friday night and it's quite exciting uh, Friday fright night eh? football at the hive so um, it's Halloween so hopefully we can put on a display it's not going to be easy they've won tonight's run top so uh, beat a good side in Gateshead um, so yeah there's no easy games in the division and they come ticking fast and these are the great times of the season especially if you win football matches so it makes you feel that much better that's all in the future but tonight we can celebrate Dean thank you so much Thanks,